The Kwani Bella Reforestation Project was made possible by a grant received from the UNDP SGP in South Africa. The Kwani Bella Reforestation Project took place in the northeastern part of South Africa's KwaZulu Natal province. The project area covers Nibela Peninsula and falls well within the East Mangalisi Wetlands Park, also known as the Greater St. Lucia Wetlands Park. 40 participants, one tractor driver, two project coordinators and one GPS operator benefited from the Kwanibela reforestation project. The indigenous people of Kwanibela are highly dependent on the indigenous forest as a source for building material, food and medicine. Poaching in the adjacent St. Lucia World Heritage Site is rife and compromises the future status of the area as a World Heritage Site. The following picture depicts a person who is processing plant products to be used in traditional medicine. 95% of indigenous people in Nibela still visit traditional healers on a regular basis. These healers all depend on the indigenous forest for the medicinal products they prescribe. It is not only poaching, the unregulated and illegal harvesting of animal and plant products that is unsustainable. It is also the unsustainable agricultural practices that impact adversely on the environment. Slash and burn and shifting cultivation methods are also practiced. The total amount of forest and remaining forest patches decreases annually as the demand for arable and grazing land increases. Due to the low soil nutrient value, fields are usually abandoned after two to three planting seasons. These abandoned fields are soon invaded by alien invasive plant species like lantana, paraffin bush and castor oil plants. Not only is this a threat to the biodiversity of the area, but it also threatens the livelihood of indigenous people as these invasive plant species invade grazing areas. Some of these plants are also poisonous and hazardous to livestock. Abandoned fields and cleared areas are also prone to erosion. Due to the slope and the gradient, the position of the Nibela Peninsula in relation to the St. Lucia World Heritage Site, land degradation of the, this area must be viewed in a very serious light. The following picture shows the effect of erosion. This was caused by unmanaged flood water after the disruption of the natural waterways due to deforestation. This is one of the major causes of siltation of the St. Lucia Lake. Siltation of a lake impacts negatively on the aquatic life forms of a lake. This in turn impacts on the indigenous fishermen who used to make a living from fishing. This picture shows dead fish on the shore of Lake St. Lucia. The death of these fish were caused by low water levels and hypersaline water conditions which we experienced in 2008 and 2009. Concerned and affected members of a community took action and launched a tree seedling propagation project. The aim of the project was to propagate as many as possible endemic tree seedlings. 15 unemployed women were trained in propagation techniques. Nursery bags were donated to them and all the seedlings propagated by them were purchased by the Kwanibela Community Trust. In this picture, Gogi Ngomalu shows some of the three seedlings she has propagated. Due to persistent water shortages in the area, these seedlings were transported to a holding area where it were transplanted into bigger containers in preparation for it to be transplanted in selected deforested and degraded areas. Once these trees were ready to be transplanted, 36 unemployed women and 4 men received training in correct planting techniques. These 40 participants formed the core of a Kwanibela reforestation project and are also the beneficiaries of a project. In this picture, Stephen Mughali to the left and Tandiwe Mgluli. They were the elected project coordinators. They identified all the planting areas. They have done a magnificent job in executing this project successfully. As part of a verification process, the GPS position of every tree was documented by Umfana. 
to the right of the picture. The reforestation trees were delivered to all the participants at the identified planting areas. All the trees were labelled to identify it according to species and the person who planted the tree. This info will be reflected on the GPS. Not only have the participants worked, but family members readily assisted their relatives. This was truly a team effort. People were glad that the project had a multi-pronged approach, helping their participants on the short term, educating people in conservation and thus benefiting the environment on the long term. This picture shows how people worked together in planting the trees. In the background, the water car, which supplied water, can be seen. Once all the trees were planted, they were covered with fawn thicket to protect it against browsers, shown here by Pekilim Gluli. As part of a verification process, the positions of all trees were documented using a GPS device. Participants were enumerated after all these actions were successfully finalized. In addition to this planting fee, every participant also received a bi-monthly caretaker's fee for four months. This was paid to maintain the trees. It is with joy and pride that we can report that the Kwanibela reforestation project has brought hope to the people of Kwanibela and that our children may inherit a more environmentally aware future that they can attain a sustainable balance between the environment and development. Kwanibela Community Trust firmly believes that this project can easily be replicated in other parts of the world. Initiatives and projects like this can only be successfully implemented if and when there is a vision, willpower, motivation and commitment to execute it. We want to thank all participants for their commitment and a special thanks to the UNDP SGP and especially to Mr. Katuzelo Neluhenu, National Coordinator of the UNDP SGP offices in Pretoria for his valuable guidance over this past year. Thank you.